Okay, everybody, let's take a look at um, a problem that involves solving for a regular triangle. Now, if you remember, when you're asked to solve a triangle, that means they're going to give you some of the missing pieces, like a couple of the sides or maybe an angle on a side or something like that. And it's our job to find all the remaining missing sides and angles. So um, here they're telling me that I've got a right triangle, and they're telling me a little bit of info about it. Uh, remember, in general, and it probably depends on what textbook you're following, but usually we let C be the hypotenuse. A, B would be one of these two side lengths. It doesn't matter which is which, so I'll just say this one is A, and let's say that's 5, and then therefore this side is B. That's one of the things I'm looking for. And then you got to remember that another uh, common practice is that the s angle that's opposite side length A is usually referred to as alpha. So I'm interested in that angle. And the angle opposite of side length B, right, is typically referred to as beta. Remember, not all books will use this kind of protocol, but many do. So A is opposite alpha, B is opposite beta. All right, so those are the missing pieces I need. And if you recall, uh, one of the neat things about trig is there are many ways to do a problem. Um, so that's all. That's very liberating, and at the same time, it could be a little intimidating when you're first learning trig because often we're used to just being told, "Okay, do it this particular way," um, and you know you'll get to your answer. Well, with trig, you have a lot of options. So um, let's just go about these. Uh, there's really not an order that is best. Sometimes you have multiple orders you can go in. Like for example, I could find any one of these angles right now, right off the bat, using some inverse trig. I can also find B right off the bat using Pythagorean theorem. So it's really entirely up to you what you want to do. I'm going to go ahead and just find B using Pythagorean's theorem. Now one thing I highly recommend you do is organize your work as best you can. So I'm going to tell the person following my work what I'm doing. I'm finding side B. Now to do that, again, I'm trying to get as much credit as I can, so I'm going to first write out Pythagorean's theorem in general. And then I'm going to plug in the pieces I know. I know that uh, A is 5. I'm looking for the B. And I know C is 12. And so cleaning this up, I get 25 plus B squared is, this is 144. And let's subtract 25 to the other side. So uh, I get B squared equals all right, in doing so, we're going to get 119 for b squared. Okay, um, so remember, if you square root both sides to get rid of the square, that's perfectly allowed, but this is not the correct thing to show. You forgot to include plus or minus. Anytime you square root both sides of an equation, you absolutely must put plus or minus on your next step. Because sometimes the answer will be the negative answer. You're going to see that later down the road in trig. Well, right now, I'm talking about B as a side length. Um, I'm not, I haven't put it on an X, Y axis, so there's no, you know, indication of whether I'm going left or right. And so I'm just going to treat it as a length, and I'm going to give it a positive answer. So there is B. Okay. Make sure your answer is always easy to find. Also, be sure to focus on your writing. I showed all my steps. I lined up my equal signs. That's a really good practice. It just forces your work to kind of be a little bit more organized. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to block off this work, and I'm going to go after another piece. So now I know this is radical 119. Let's go get one of those angles. Now, if I knew one of the angles, I could use the fact that all three of them have to add up to 180, and that could help me find the third. Because I don't know either of them, um, I need to just pick on one. Pick alpha or beta, doesn't matter. And again, this is where trig just has tons of different ways to do this problem. So let's just go with, uh, I don't know, alpha. I'm going to tell my reader what I'm doing. I'm finding alpha. Okay. So I can use any trig function I want. I do know all three sides of this triangle. Okay. So if, you're, if you've learned... Uh, Sokatoa, 
Maybe that's one way you learned your trig functions. That's probably the most common way. But there's also the point definition, you know, um, things like that. Although because, again, we haven't drawn this triangle on an xy axis, the point definition, you know, the fact that sine is y over r doesn't really make sense. It makes sense to think of it in terms of so, ka, and toa. Okay, so if I want to find alpha, I need to just pick a trig function um, that incorporates alpha. So what I do is I tend to avoid any of these uglier numbers just because I don't want to have to type them in my computer or calculator, run the risk of getting them wrong. So what I'm looking at is I'm looking at the side opposite of alpha. That's a nice number. And I'm looking at the hypotenuse of this triangle. That's a nice whole number. No ugly radicals. So I've identified a side opposite alpha and a hypotenuse. So if I want to think about um, which trig function I could use, come up to Sokoto and, and you'll see that when you identify an opposite and a hypotenuse, you should be using the sine function. So I know that sine of alpha should equal the side opposite alpha over the hypotenuse of the triangle. Okay. Now what I'm interested in is solving for angle alpha, and right now that's embedded inside this trig function. I want to bring it outside. And so if you recall, you are always allowed to switch back and forth from this sort of standard form to your inverse trig form. And that what that does is that makes the ratio and angle swap places. Don't forget that when you take sine, you're plugging in an angle. And what comes out is a ratio specifically the opposite over the hypotenuse of your triangle um, based on where you're standing. Now if you start dealing with sine inverse or arc sine, what you plug in there is the ratio and what's going to come out is the angle that gives you that ratio. All right, So you can always swap between the two forms depending on what you're looking for. I want to free up that angle and get it outside of the equal sign, so I'm going to switch to inverse notation. So this means that sine inverse of 5 twelfths, well, that's equal to my alpha. And that I'm just going to consult the calculator. Now, this problem doesn't say whether or not I should list my angles in terms of degrees or radians, so it's entirely up to you. I'm going to work in degrees. Sine inverse of 5 twelfths is 24.6243. I'm just going to call it about 24.6 degrees. We'll just go to one decimal place. Okay, there's my first angle alpha. All right, so I've got this guy down 24.6, and now I just need beta. Now, one way to get angle beta is to do exactly what I just did. Pick on angle beta, stand at angle beta, pick two of the three sides of that triangle, and formulate the correct trig function. And then we'll snap the angle out of there by switching to inverse notation. That is 100% correct. There's nothing wrong with that at all. I'm just going to highlight a different way, because technically we do know two of these three angles, right? I know the angle alpha is 24.6 degrees, and I know this angle here is 90 degrees. So one option to find beta, again, I'm telling the person following my work what I'm doing, is to recognize that all three angles in this triangle add up to 180. So I would start, again, by writing, at, writing that out, write out my general formula. It's all good partial credit. Alpha plus beta plus that 90 degree angle, they all add to 180, right? Because those are the three angles inside that triangle. Now I'm looking for beta. So simply plug in what we know. I know alpha is 24.6 degrees. Remember to always write your degree symbols. Every time you intend an angle to be in degrees, you must write degrees, because the lack of a degree symbols means you are in radians. Okay, so it's really important. Well, all I need to do is I need to take the 24 and fling it to the other side, and the 90 and fling it to the other side, you know, to get beta all by itself. So I'm going to take uh, that 180, I'm going to say beta is equal to 180 minus the 90 and minus the 24.6 that I'm moving over to the other side. So let me use a calculator so I don't make a mistake. 
I got 65.4 for beta. All right. Now another thing you might notice is that, well, the angles maybe don't look correct for my diagram. Never trust a diagram, okay? Never trust a picture in your math class because they're not always, in fact, I would say seldom to never are they drawn to scale. The diagram just helps us kind of ensure that we get the right angles opposite the right sides and things like that. Anyways, this was one example of solving a right triangle. A couple things I highly recommend you do is organize your work. Um, a big secret to math is getting partial credit, right? Because um, mistakes are going to happen. You're going to add wrong. You're going to write something down wrong. I, I do it all the time still. So you want to show your, show your instructor that you know what the heck is going on. And that is shown by having nice, clear, easy-to-follow work. Okay? All right. Good luck with it.